guys, welcome to the Mark Like Us podcast. So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Adrian and I want to do more one-on-one -on -one with family and friends. So we're going to be interviewing just that family and friends. So today I have with me Noah, who's my husband, and I'm going to be asking him some questions. And he does not know any of these questions that I'm about to ask him just to get a perspective from a somebody else, somebody close to us, somebody not in the birthmark community. So I'm gonna go ahead and dive in. So, Noah, hey. what, hi. <laughs> what was your first impression of me? Well, we met when we were just young teenagers. I thought you were absolutely beautiful. Like, your long, your long brown hair, your big brown eyes, like, just thought you were absolutely stunning. That, that's how it was. <laughs> yeah, I just thought you were absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, so just a quick uh, backstory, right? So Noah and I met in high school, and um, so we went to um, Franklin is the name, um, and so we have now been married for 13 years, and we have two kids, so, um, it's pretty crazy knowing each other for about 20 years now. That's how long or so, give or take. And um, I think longer than that. I mean, I think you were 15. I was... I was like 14. Yeah, you were 14. I was 17. And then when he met me in this time in my life, I did wear makeup to school. I did um, cover... Yeah, um, you covered half your face like that. Yeah, so but you always looked up at me with I these big brown like, eyes. I would that do were, this. This yeah. was the look every day for school, because two reasons. Yes, my birthmark, but um, I have glaucoma in my left eye, so my eye is always um, kind of like a reddish tint hue, and I was super self conscious that I would often get asked, like, "Do you have pink eye?" Or you know, more so the eye. I was yeah. just nervous. So, um, did you ever have to tell anybody? Um, before they met me, like, hey, by the way, Hannah has a birthmark, like a disclaimer, if you will, or like type thing. Not that I could remember ever telling people like, hey, you're going to meet my at the time girlfriend and then fiance and then wife. I never said, hey, oh, FYI, you know, my wife got a birthmark on the left side of her face, you know, but I, I felt like it wasn't my place. I loved you and I love you for who you are. So why am I going to give people a warning if they ask a question and they ask a question? It's something that I've, I've never been one to be like, oh yeah, my wife's got a, my wife's got a birthmark. Yeah. No, that's just, that's not who I am. I, I thought you were beautiful from high school all the way up to now. Why, why be like, oh, hey, you know, no, I've never told anybody. Yeah. There's no reason to. So before me, have you ever met anybody, or even after, like, have you ever met anyone else with a skin difference, or is it just me? You are the first person I've ever met with a port wine stain. I've never once, I've never once in my life heard of something like that, to be honest with you. And then when you told me what it was, mm -hmm. never looked at you any different. I still thought you were beautiful. Yeah, that's very sweet. <laughs> um, <laughs> so let's see, negative feedback. So, have you ever received negative uh, feedback or comments as a husband, uh, like male perspective, to like female perspective because I have a port wine stain? And I already know the answer to this, that's why I asked. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you you were right there to witness it with me. Yes, I've had people accuse me of being a wife beater. Yeah. I've had people, you know, look at me like, oh my God, this guy, he, he hits his wife, look at her face. Mm -hmm. it 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 sucks i'm not gonna lie it, it hurts and still even today i still get those looks when you and i are out and about and you don't wear makeup or we're just holding hands walking around they'll just look at you and they'll look at me and they'll just give me like this look i just i've learned to just kind of brush it off yeah so there's one story that i would like to share which is um noah and i were with our daughter our oldest daughter at the time our youngest wasn't born yet we were at a football game and it was a huge stadium with a ton of people and um I had makeup like I have makeup on right now very little though like this foundation and stuff 
but that day I had full makeup, makeup, eyeshadow, the whole nine yards. And, um, you know, as we were out, I ran into, well, my husband ran into somebody that at the time he worked with, this was a customer that would come in and she was an elderly woman and she said hello to me and she was very nice. You know, she kind of gave me an up and down look. Um, but I just thought maybe she's looking at just what I'm wearing or I, I have no idea. I didn't think anything of it at the time. And the next day, Noah tells me, hey, that woman that you met, um, she came in pretty angry at me saying like, how dare you beat your wife? I saw her. How dare you? And I was floored to say the least. I was I remember thinking to myself, I think the first thing that came out of my mouth was, but I was wearing makeup. Like, how did you? And I think a lot of people can say that too. Like when you wear makeup, you almost think of it as, um, how did they see it? Or how did they, how did they notice kind of thing? Um, but it more so, I think it bothered me that she assumed the absolute worst, which is that Noah was hurting me in some way and I was covering it or hiding it or something. And that's not the first, that's just one. That's just one instance. Another one was, uh, I, I used to work at a gym and she saw you and me with our youngest, our oldest walking around somewhere. And she also accused me while I was working, you hit your wife. Mm -hmm. And I was taken back and, and I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, do you hit your wife? I saw your wife's face. And I said, do I look like a wife beater? Mm -hmm. And she said, well, no, but, and before she could say anything else, I cut her off and I said, my wife was born with a birthmark on the left side of your face. I'm guessing that that's what you saw. And she said, yes, it was on the left side. And I said, she was born with that. Mm -hmm. And she turned as bright red as I've ever seen. And she just walked away. I don't think I've ever seen her again after that. But she was trying to cause a scene while at my workplace. Yeah, like trying to say, like, I caught this wife beater kind of situation. Yeah, exactly. You know, and... Yeah, and then with me, one other story I would like to share is just, um, I used to work at a school, and I was in the front office. I was the office manager at the time, and I absolutely loved it. It was great, and there was a bunch of kiddos, and um, there was one parent specifically that came up to me, and she asked me, are you okay? just very blunt. And I said, yeah, I'm fine. And I thought, oh, maybe I just, maybe because I look tired, it's been a long day. That's what she was referring to. And she goes, no, no, no. Are you okay? How did you bust your lip? And I remember because yes, with my birthmark, um, my lip, I had surgery as I've mentioned before. Um, but for those of you watching for the first time or people that have seen this, um, I have shared that my lip used to be uh, droopy. It used to be like this. I've had surgery, but even then it's, it's never going to be completely symmetrical to this side of my face. Like I've totally embraced that and totally fine with it. So when she said that comment, I was like, mm, I think my lips looks, looks just fine. And she was like, you don't have to hide it. I'm a domestic abuse counselor. And I see all these cases all the time. And you know, I see you here with your makeup and your heavy lipstick and it's not, it's this color lipstick. And I laughed and I said, I understand your job a hundred percent. And she looked confused as to why I laughed. And I said, I wear darker nude colors like these tinted nude browns and earthy tones because without any makeup on my lip on this side is just darker, naturally more pigmented than this side and this side. So I have to kind of do something a little bit darker to balance the look, right? So it's why I don't wear just like plain lip gloss or light colors. And she just was like, but what's what's wrong with you? What do you have? And I remember I just, I wanted to cry at that point because it was like, oh my God. And I just told her, I'm fine. How can I help you today with enrolling your son in camp? <laughs> and she never brought it up again, but... For sure, every time I saw her after that, it was like an odd encounter. Like, um, 
and the other story that I would like to share, just because I feel like this is, again, awareness. Um, no one knows this. Well, no one knows everything, but um, the one thing is, is that long story short, right, is I was at a doctor's office. There was an x-ray technician who was taking my x-rays and he asked me because I had a mask on. This was a little after COVID and I, again, I was wearing makeup. It was similar to what I'm wearing today. Very light, um, you know, nothing too, too heavy. And when I took off my mask, he goes, whoa, what happened? Were you in a car accident? And I said, no, 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 I, I just have a birthmark, a port wine stain. And he goes, but um, were you just born like that? And I said, yeah, yeah. And that was his tone. He was, he was, you know, his eyebrows were furrowed and he was looking at me very sternly and he wouldn't take my answer as just, it's just a birthmark. He was being very, very persistent. And I remember I told him, I said, I'm, I'm fine. I, you know, and he goes, how are you just born like that? Like when you were born, were you taken out of the womb improperly? And I just started thinking, you're really reaching. Like you really want me to tell you some elaborate dramatic story, but it's as simple as just being born with a birthmark. And I said, it just happens spontaneously. There is no reason. There is no specific you know, it's just that spontaneous. And he said, but you have kids, right? And I said, I do, I have two kids. Because I had mentioned that on my medical form. And he had told me, oh, okay, I mean, do they have that? It got to the point where I just, again, he was just persisting and I shut down. I was crying, waiting for my x-ray results. And I remember right away, I just felt like how many other people in the community have probably experienced something like that, especially from a medical professional where you feel like in a medical setting, you should feel safe. Um, and it's happened a lot. And I'm curious if it's happened to anybody out there, if you, you guys can like comment, share your story as well. Please do. Yeah. Like, have you ever experienced something where you are in a, in a medical setting and let's say it's for something totally irrelevant from anything having to do with your birthmark. And, um, or if you're a spouse and you've had people look at you, like you beat the, you know, your love, like yeah. if you had that situation happen to you, leave a comment and tell us, tell us your story. Yeah. Because it, I feel like those things need to be brought to light because if you're in a medical situation, like, let's say you go to the hospital and you break your arm, people look at, you know, oh, what happened? It's like, focus on the arm. Or in Noah's case, where it's like, whether you're male or female, you know, people often like to joke and say, oh, did you, is your wife beating you up? Like, if it's a man that has a birthmark or vice versa, those kinds of comments or the comments of like, oh, let's see the other guy. Um, I really wish we could just stop that and just have more empathy for the fact that people are human and um it's not okay to have that kind of bold rudeness and um because that's all it is it's just lack of empathy being completely rude yeah just being a complete dick and it's not anything to be proud of right absolutely and so back to the questions um but yeah Let's see, because those stories we just want to share just so that people are aware. And just if, if other people have experienced that, let us know. But so back to the <laughs> one off topic for a second. Um, so, okay. Um, so when you met me um, and you were aware of the birthmark and everything, did you know like, oh, that's just a birthmark? Or did you, were you unaware of birthmarks at that time in high school? <laughs> I was, I assumed that. It was something that you were born with. Right. I just didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. I knew it was a birthmark. I just didn't know there was a name for it until you told me. Yeah. So do you think, like, with everything, especially, at, like, as um, my husband, um, everything you've seen me go through with, like, doctor's appointments, laser treatments, all that stuff, do you ever stop and think, I, what if I had, meaning you, like, if you had... A skin difference of some kind do you, how do you think you would handle those situations like going to laser treatments going to get your eyes checked regularly and all those things I don't know how I, I would be able to handle it 
period. Um, I'll be honest with you, I probably couldn't do half of the things that you've, you've gone through since you were six. You know, I couldn't have imagined doing stuff like that. I mean, I could barely sit down for a tattoo session. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you're getting laser on your face. And that's that's admirable and that's courageous that you do that. So the fact that you've been doing it since you were six years old is it's amazing. Yeah, and do you feel like, you know, from a male perspective, um, in the sense of, okay, so like anybody can wear makeup, right? It doesn't matter. You don't have to be female or male, right? You can, anybody can wear makeup. But do you feel like if you did have a skin difference, would you feel the need in some way to cover it? Or would you just... Being younger, yeah, because kids kids are ruthless. Kids are mean. They are. They'll find a the little thing to pick on you, and then they'll get their friends all into it, and then one bully becomes three, and then three becomes six. It's just, it's a, it's a pack of wolves. Right. So, yeah, as a kid, you want to cover it because you want to try to avoid being bullied. Yeah. You want to try to avoid being singled out. As you get older, you learn to not just, you learn to not give a shit anymore. You just, yeah, I know like it's hard to say, it's hard to do rather than say, because I know deep down inside it's still, it'll get people, even you to this day. Yeah, even you know, me to this even, day. You know, you'll be over the moon with confidence and then somebody out there will make a gesture or look and suddenly that confidence just goes from here to here, mm -hmm. like lightning fast. Right. So it's an everyday struggle. That's why I'm always going to be your support system. Yeah, I think that's what's great too, is like having that support system. Um, I always reassure her how beautiful she is. Yes. Every day. And I always, Every day. I always find them saying like, that's not true. But that's another thing that I think people, I, I just want to share. She's never going to win that battle, by the way. No, but I... She'll never win that. <laughs> I will say like, in general, we should totally learn to accept compliments that's something i'm still learning to do is just from our loved ones from people that love us just learning to accept that yes like we are beautiful no matter what and um if we can see the beauty that our loved ones see in ourselves i think that's something really great especially having kids because kids can pick up on those things of like oh my mom doesn't think that she's pretty so, you know, and all of that kind of falls down. I want our kids, right, speak specifically, like, and in general, um, to be able to look at us and say, my mom has confidence, she has endured, and my daughter, you know, being 11, she has seen me on those tough days where some, like, you know, somebody says something. Some days I'm like, no, okay, whatever. But some days you catch me in a moment and I do get emotional because I'm human. You know, some days I'm like, oh, I didn't, I didn't want to hear that. Or that's, that's new. You know, like people always come up, there's always, right when you think you've heard it all, you're like, I've never heard that one. And it'll, it'll startle you for a moment. And then it takes me about a, two or three days. And then I'm like, I'm okay. I'm back, you know, but having a support system is what's great. I agree. So um, we shared earlier, you know, how people have said negative things. So from your perspective, with somebody who um, has seen the other side, like been on the other side of the table, seeing people approach me negatively, what do you think is a good approach to ask somebody about their skin difference? Like, what would you say, for example, let's say you didn't know me and you wanted to know, like, hey, you know, your birthmark how would you approach it what's a good way you see that's where people got to learn how to tread water you got to tread lightly with that kind of stuff yeah you can't just go up to somebody and be like oh hey what's up man nice nice day what happened to you you know you, you can't you know that that's the approach like 90 percent of a the lot time. You, there's no easy way to ask somebody like what happened in general like exactly you can't whatever it there's, is there's nothing there's no easy way mm -hmm. i could tell you if you were a stranger on the street i would not ask you about it i'd want your phone number oh and take God. you out <laughs> but i wouldn't ask right. oh hey let's go have some dinner by the way what the fuck happened to you that's no that's not first of all that's just rude as hell mm -hmm. you know there's something called manners <laughs> you know but 
that's just it's it's very difficult to find something like when we ran in like when we were getting our kids food remember i went into that restaurant there was a woman there with the port wine stain right and i wanted to give her your card mm -hmm. but i didn't know how to approach right exactly. i didn't i didn't know what to say i didn't want to be like oh hey by the way port wine stain right yeah i know a lot about that my wife has one because right. she could literally look at look at me and be like huh you know give me the finger in front of everyone at whataburger and tell me to piss off it's not easy to go up to somebody and say, oh, hey, what happened to you? Mm -hmm. You know, if you get to know that person, talk to them, kind of make them feel comfortable and then kind of kind of work your, you know, work it in. You know what I mean? Or if they feel the confidence to be able to tell you, oh, hey, by the way, you know, this is what this is. Yeah. You're the one that told me. Mm -hmm when we started to get to know each other and we were crushing on each other hardcore, I didn't, I've never, I never asked you about it. Yeah. And that's what I've learned too. Is you like, told me. <laughs> the people in my life that just got to know me, like one of my, like my best friend, I will say, um, and her name's Terry. Hello. Um, <laughs> she's amazing. She, um, we were friends like for a while and it was maybe like two, three years and I was the one that brought it up. And she never, ever, ever asked. She was just so sweet and kind about it. And I would jokingly say, like, you know, that it looks like my own personal island because of the shape that it is. And, but I would tell her it's just a port wine stain. Um, and she was honest. Like, she would ask me, you know, I was curious, but after a while, you just don't see it. And I thought that's really beautiful that um, after a while, just that, you just don't. You just don't see it and she um you know she's just always been so empathetic in general and it's funny because i continue it's weird what the people that you attract in your life like i've continued to meet new friends that are so sweet and kind and empathetic and they just have never asked me they just get to know me and if it comes up in conversation it's me that says by the way, um, my birthmark. And then they're like, oh, <laughs> like suddenly there's like that click of like, you can tell deep down they were always curious. They just never knew how to ask. But by then you've already established this really cool friendship. Yeah, they just don't, they don't look at it. They don't see it. They, but they just, just see you. don't care. Yeah, and it's really sweet. And um, so we always ask everybody in all of our interviews, like when we close it, we say, what is your message to the world? Because that's important. So what is your message in general to the world? Practice kindness. Mm -hmm. you, everyone has, everyone is going through a battle. Everyone has a war that they're fighting somehow, some way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to add on to that is not going to make you feel better. Practicing kindness and realizing that everyone out there is in some kind of a struggle. Lifting somebody up, helping somebody smile is a much better feeling than tearing somebody apart. And I've been on both sides of that. And I, I realized that making fun of people just to get some cheap laughs doesn't make you feel good. Right. When you make somebody smile just by saying, hey, hope you're having a great day. Seriously. Something as simple as that can turn somebody's whole day around. Yeah. To let them know that, yeah, there's, you're going through the shit, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel and it's not all bad. So my message is practice kindness better. Treat people with kindness. Mm -hmm. That's my message. Yeah. And that's a good message for sure. So, um, this was really great. Um, <laughs> thank you for interviewing me, babe. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> And so it's just, it's so nice to get a perspective from somebody that I literally live with and his family and everything. Cause I think sometimes like we need to take a step back outside of ourselves and just ask these questions. So it's something fun, like for you guys watching, you know, um, that's pretty cool to do even like with your family and friends, maybe ask them these cool questions and you'll unlock some cool memories or maybe things that you didn't even know that they 
we're feeling and it's pretty neat. So this is Leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll make sure that she interviews her mom and dad and sister next. <laughs> God. That would be that would an be awesome, awesome interview. Yes, that would be really great. Especially like their generation. They've taught me a lot. They've been really supportive. Um, Getting their perspectives on it would be a treat. So leave a comment and I'll make sure she does it. Yes. Um, but that was in the works anyway, to be honest. So <laughs> I was going to do, um, for sure, like I wanted to get my parents' perspective because how cool, like, to get um, their view of what it was like to raise three kids, one with a port wine stain, doing back-to-back -back laser. Um, and especially, like, this was in, like, the 90s, you know? So that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, so I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank and you, thank babe. you guys for watching. And stay tuned for future podcasts. And comment as well who you think Adrian should interview. Because we're going to do this, I think, more often. So that would be really cool. So thank you guys. Bye. Bye.